began a recital and hymn sing during worship with a potluck to follow. On that day, Sunday school will begin at 9 a.m., while worship and the recital will begin at 10 a.m. It will be a day of good music and great fellowship, and we hope to see you there. April 30th is the deadline to submit a recipe for the UFW cookbook. As to ensure your favorite recipe is included, please give or send to our fishery your recipes no later than April 30th. May 10th, the UFW uh, Night Circle Meeting at 6.30 p.m. And May 14th, the UFW and Doris Circle Meeting will be at 10.30 a.m. May 17th will be Family Game Night at 6 p.m. <coughs> May 19th will be Graduation Sunday. Please submit all graduates' names to the, to the church office by May 12th so that they can be recognized on May 19th, Graduation Sunday. Upper rooms are available. Pick up a copy at either Sanctuary Entrance to Dr. Daly's and attendance, please draw your attendance together into the pew of those who were with us in worship this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is a joy to be in worship with all of you this morning. One note about the time change on April 28th is that that time change will be likely permanent, at least through the summer. And so starting on April 28th, we will be we will have Sunday school at 9 a.m. and worship at 10. And so please note that time change. We will be reminding you every week from now until probably forever. <laughs> Most importantly, whether this is your first time or you've been attending for years, whether you're strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. And it is a joy to worship with you today. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. Turn to Christ. Who calls us here? Place your trust in God. Who protects our lives. Lean into the Spirit as we worship in spirit and truth. I invite you now to stand as you're able as we sing together hymn number 162, Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. <laughs>
please remain standing as we affirm our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of boiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Even though now I think that Reese's eggs have changed from eggs to whatever comes next, which is the only way I can mark the changing of the seasons. But we're still celebrating this Easter season because we are Easter people. Even when the pyramids are not white, even when it is not just two weeks out from Easter, we are Easter people. And as Easter people, it is our responsibility to talk about the resurrection. And how we talk about the resurrection matters. We experience the resurrection with our senses, with the smells we smell, with the food we eat, the breaking of bread. We experience the resurrection as we watch the seasons change. So how we talk about the resurrection matters. James Cone, an American Methodist minister and theologian, he was best known for his advocacy of black theology and black liberation theology, said in his book, The Cross and the Lynching Tree, any analysis of the gospel which did not begin and end with God's liberation of the oppressed was ipso facto unchristian. How we talk about the resurrection matters. If we talk about the resurrection in ways that limit the resurrection, then we are not doing Christianity any sort of service. And so how we talk about the resurrection matters. Because how we experience the resurrection matters. We see the, res the power of the resurrection through the redemptive work that Christ offers us. We experience the resurrection when we read the text, when we read scripture week after week, knowing that the Holy Spirit is moving and that we might hear something new. We experience the resurrection when we gather together. And sometimes the witnessing part, the sharing, the experience of the resurrection is difficult. And I am saying that as a pastor whose job it is to 
witness to the resurrection. That sometimes there are times when I feel like I have to apologize for being a pastor because we see what Christianity looks like in this country. Because how we talk about the resurrection matters. And if it does not begin and end with God's liberation, then we are not doing enough to share the power of the resurrection. And so where is the good news in this? Well, the good news is that we are not alone in this journey. We are not alone in this challenge to share the power of the resurrection. We're not alone because we are all in this place right now, hearing the scripture, experiencing the Holy Spirit. The good news is that the church is how we witness to the resurrection. There's a book that I am going to read to you a little bit later because you all know how I love my children's books. And it starts with the, here's the church, here's the steeple, open the doors, see all the people. Close the doors and the people pray, open the doors and they all walk away. Friends, the church is beyond just this space. The church is beyond just this time. And the church reminds us that it has to be a place where all are welcomed and embraced and invited and loved. Because if that isn't what the church is, if that isn't what the church is about, then I'm not sure what we're doing. And I am aware of many of the views of Christianity. I am aware that we contain many in this room and that you sitting in the pews might think I'm a crazy person, might disagree with me on principle, but still love me as I love you and as Christ has loved each of us. Martin Luther said that the preacher witnesses to the gospel on Sunday so that the congregation can witness to the gospel Monday through Saturday. John Wesley said, the world is my parish. And so we were reminded that this is not the only time we do church. We do church every day. We do church when we stand up with our privilege to help bring about the work of liberation. We are the church when we refuse to be quiet about oppression. We are the church when we remember our baptismal covenant to resist evil, oppression, and injustice in whatever forms they present themselves. And so here and now as Easter people, as people who have experienced the power of resurrection, as people who believe the resurrection, 
We are the church and we are tasked to be witnesses. And that is the good news. This is the church by Sarah Raymond Cunningham, illustrated by Ariel Landry. There's a little rhyme that children say, a song they sing sometimes when they play. This rhyme is about God's family. To do it, just move your hands like me. Here is the church. Here is the steeple. Open the doors and see all the people. What a great rhyme, isn't it neat? But wait, this story's not yet complete. There's more to the church than just those two lines. To learn about God's family, let's add to this rhyme. Some churches are so big and wide, 10,000 people can fit inside. Other churches are really quite small. They fit just a few people, and that is all. Some have church right where they are, right in their houses. That's not very far. And not all churches have roofs and floors. Some don't have steeples. Some don't have doors. Some people have church under the stars, and God comes and meets them right where they are. And in places where it's not safe to be found, some people even have church underground. And church isn't something that stands still, you know. The church follows God's people wherever they go. The church moves in buses, planes, and cars to share God's love. The church has gone far. The church works among the sick, hungry, and poor with people in need wherever they are. It's gone to cities and it's gone to towns, to school and to work, the church gets around. But how does this work? How can it be? Can a church really move like you and me? That's the secret, it certainly can. Church moves through your feet, it works through your hands. The people are the church, don't you see? Church is a word for God's family. Because Jesus said, where there are two or three who are gathered in my name, that's where I'll be. So let's get back to the old rhyme now. Get your hands ready. We'll show you how. Here is a building. It may have a steeple. But where is the church the church is the people. Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, I invite the ushers forward for this morning's offering. Let us pray. O oh God, pour out your spirit upon these our gifts, gifts that have been graciously given to us that we now humbly return to you. May they be used to further your kingdom on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Eden. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, our full prayer list can be found on the back of the bulletin. We continue to keep Margaret King and her family in our prayers after the death of her sister, Virginia Cherry. We also want to lift up Mike and Terry Gurton. They used to be part of this conference and now live in Oklahoma. They suddenly lost their son, Christopher, last week, and so we want to keep them in our prayers. Are there other joys or concerns we want to lift up this morning? We want to keep Margaret's daughter, Teresa Adkins, in our prayers. Are there any others? Let us go to God in prayer. Holy and loving God, God of the oppressed, God of liberation, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the reminder, the constant reminder that we are indeed Easter people. God, as we come to you this day, we come with hearts full, full of joy, full of grief, full of loneliness and comfort and the whole range of our human experience. Oh God, we lay our prayers at your feet. The prayers that we share aloud with one another and the ones that are deep within our hearts, the ones that are beyond words, the ones we are scared to utter aloud. Lord, we know that you hear all of our prayers. Oh God, for this world that on days feels like it is more violent and disjointed, For the places that are experiencing war and violence and genocide, we pray for your justice and peace. And we pray for your urging within us to stand in the gap where we can. O oh God, for this country that faces division, separation, and hatred, and violence, we pray that you would use us to be your instruments of peace. O oh God, for the hurt, the pain, the struggle that this community faces, we pray for your hand of comfort upon us. O 
And God, we lift up to you our celebrations for the joy we have, for the places where we see the resurrection, we give you thanks. And now as your beloved children, we pray together the prayer that Jesus first taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to the close of our service this morning, I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 307, Christ is risen. <laughs> 